Discover ancient Chinese wisdom through captivating stories brought to life in this video. Explore timeless tales of morality, philosophy, and the art of living as passed down through generations. A journey into the heart of Chinese culture, offering insights and inspiration for modern life. 1. The Perils of Power and Deception The Downfall of King Zhou of Shang Growing up in wealthy and influential families, their desires burn fiercely and their power flickers dangerously close. Even if their fiery ambitions and power don't consume others, they can still ignite and burn themselves. In the Zhou dynasty, King Zhou of Shang was notoriously cruel and corrupt. He had a beautiful concubine named Daji, who never smiled. To amuse her, King Zhou devised a plan to set fire to his vassal states, hoping her laughter would be the reward. One twilight, he took Daji to the city gate tower and ordered fires to be lit in all directions. Neighboring states, mistaking the blaze for an invasion by the western barbarians, hurriedly sent troops to assist. Upon arrival and seeing the illuminated tower filled with music and revelry, they learned it was but a thoughtless jest by King Zhou to entertain Daji. Enraged but powerless to protest, the allies disheartenedly withdrew. However, when the western barbarians truly attacked, no help came despite the fires. The allies assumed it was another of King Zhou's cruel jokes. Consequently, the capital of the Shang dynasty fell, and King Zhou met his end. His abuse of power for personal amusement led to the collapse of the Shang dynasty. This story serves as a stark reminder of the dangers inherent in misusing power and the consequences of deception, highlighting how such actions can lead not only to personal downfall, but also to the demise of an entire dynasty. 2. Ease is no reason for joy, adversity, no cause for worry. In adversity, people often find themselves resorting to medicine and acupuncture, constantly correcting their mistakes and refining their temperament. In contrast, in favorable circumstances, surrounded by potential dangers unseen, individuals may gradually erode their willpower without even realizing it. The famous Qing dynasty scholar, Cao Xueqin, originally named John and also known by his pseudonym Xueqin, was a man of generous spirit who enjoyed drinking and was talented in many arts, excelling in poetry and painting. Born into a family of officialdom, Cao Xueqin spent his youth in luxury. Later, his family fell into disgrace, their property confiscated, plunging him into poverty. Yet, this hardship did not defeat him. Instead, it offered him the chance to enjoy the pleasures of a rustic life, getting closer to nature's tranquil beauty. Daily, from dawn, he would practice swordsmanship in the forest, then return home to his old desk to start writing, with his thoughts focused. Familiar characters would parade before his eyes, urging him on tirelessly. He would carry paper and pen at his waist, ready to jot down ideas for his novel whenever inspiration struck, resulting in the completion of his famous work, an immortal piece of Chinese literature, Dream of the Red Chamber. This story exemplifies how both prosperity and adversity carry their lessons. Comfort may blind us to lurking dangers, while hardship can refine our character and fuel our creative fires, leading to enduring contributions to cultural heritage. 3. Virtue and Grudges – The Art of Letting Go Virtue and grudges should both be forgotten. Gratitude and resentment must not linger. Every grudge stems from a good deed, leading some to thank us while others bear resentment. Actions of kindness that earn gratitude should rather lead to letting go of all praises and grudges. All resentments are born from favors. So instead of seeking acknowledgement for our good deeds, we should aim to have both the benevolence and the bitterness forgotten. 
During the spring and autumn period in the state of Jin, there lived a nobleman named Wei Wu Zi. He had a favored concubine who, unfortunately, bore him no sons. As Wei Wu Zi fell ill and sensed his end nearing, he instructed his son Wei Ke regarding his funeral arrangements, specifically mentioning the concubine. After my death, she should follow me in death. However, after Wei Wu Zi's passing, Wei Ke did not compel the living concubine to commit suicide to accompany his father, but instead allowed her to remarry. Later, in a critical battle against the famed General Duo Hui of Qin, just as Wei Ke felt overwhelmed, an elderly man appeared capturing Duo Hui with a thrown rope, leading to Jin's capture of the strategic general. Wei Ke claimed victory. That night, Wei Ke dreamt of the elderly man who revealed, General, do you remember saving a young woman? I am her father, and I came here to repay your kindness. This story highlights the profound impacts of compassion and forgiveness, illustrating that the highest form of virtue is in the quiet acknowledgement and release of both good deeds and grievances, leading to unexpected and meaningful rewards. 4. Putting down the butcher's knife leads to enlightenment. When consumed by anger, desire, or any intense emotion, people often find it hard to control themselves. They know their actions are wrong but proceed anyway. Who truly understands this principle and who knowingly violates it? If one can pause, identify the core issues, and reflect on their mistakes, a sudden realization can transform harmful thoughts into kindness and compassion. During the Warring States period, King Zhuang of Chu planned to invade the state of Yue. A high official, Du Tsu, questioned, what has Yue done to deserve your aggression? The king argued that Yue's political chaos and weak military presented an opportunity for attack. Du Tsu responded, I worry about the consequences. A person's knowledge is like their eyes, capable of seeing things a hundred steps away, but blind to the eyelashes before them. Your army faced defeat in Qin and Jin, losing hundreds of miles of territory, indicating military weakness. Internal strife with Trang Q, not swiftly quelled, shows political turmoil. Attacking Yue overlooks your own faults while focusing on others. Persuaded by Du Tzu's words, King Zhuang abandoned his plans to invade Yue. Du Tzu's advice was a wake-up call, sparing countless lives from suffering. This story highlights the importance of self-reflection and understanding one's own shortcomings before judging or acting against others, promoting a path toward wisdom and peace. 5. Knowledge and Strength Dispel Selfish Spirits The incessant demands of self-interest and the challenge to curb desires prompt some to say that without strong willpower, it's impossible to overcome them. Others recognize the dangers of desire, but find themselves unable to resist its temptations. In truth, wisdom is the pearl that illuminates the hiding places of malevolent spirits, and a steadfast will is the sharp sword that banishes them. Therefore, to control one's desires, one cannot lack either wisdom or willpower. In the Warring States period, there was a man from the state of Song named Tao Shang, once, he was sent on a mission to the state of Qin by the king of Song, which earned him the title of Zuo Lin and several chariots as a gift. Welcomed generously by the king of Qin, who bestowed upon him hundreds more chariots, Tao returned to Song with great pride. Meeting with Zhuangzi, Tao boasted, Back when I was living in poverty, dejected by hardship and dragging through days with a pale and thin visage that was my deficiency. But this year, with just my persuasive tongue, I've moved the owner of thousands of chariots to gift me hundreds, showcasing my strength. Zhuangzi mocked him, saying, I've heard that the king of kin suffers an ailment and rewards those who treat it. Extracting pus from sores earns one chariot, 
licking hemorrhoids grants five. Thus, the more disgusting the treatment, the more chariots one receives. Perhaps you've been licking the king's hemorrhoids, or how else did you acquire so many chariots? Please, go away. This story highlights that true strength and merit lie not in accumulating wealth or favors through flattery or degrading acts, but in possessing the wisdom and will to act with integrity and purpose. 6. The Endless Burst of Natural Vitality In moments of utter silence, the sudden song of a bird can stir deep, poetic feelings. Witnessing a solitary flower bloom amidst a field of withered flora can profoundly move the soul, awakening an infinite vitality within. This illustrates that the essence of all things never fully perishes. Life's force quietly persists, continually giving birth to new growth. Yan Xu, a celebrated poet of the Northern Song Dynasty, was exceptionally intelligent and studious from a young age. As a young man, he was appointed by the emperor as a scholar official. While serving as an official, on his way to Hangzhou and passing through Quan Duong, he stopped at the Daimin Temple. There, he encountered a poem on the wall that deeply impressed him. Upon learning that the poem was written by Wang Qi, the local river transport commissioner, Yan Xu invited Wang Qi to dine with him. After their meal, they took a stroll by the lake. It was late spring, and the lake was adorned with fallen flowers, a sight that touched Yan Shu deeply, inspiring him to compose a line of poetry. How can one bear the sight of flowers falling? Wang Qi responded with a line. As if recognizing each other, the swallows return. Yan Shu praised this line highly and his admiration for Wang Qi grew even more for capturing such a beautiful and natural sentiment. This story reflects the profound impact of nature's resilience on human creativity and connections, reminding us of the persistent cycle of life and rebirth that surrounds us. 7. Adversity as the Forge of Character Hardships and unexpected disasters serve as a crucible for forging heroes. Enduring these trials can greatly benefit both physical health and mental strength. Otherwise, it can be detrimental to both. Around 1300 BCE in China, there was a man named Fu Shuo. Despite being born into slavery and low status, he possessed innate intelligence, quick wit, and exceptional judgment. Over time, he honed his knowledge and courage, thriving even in dire conditions. Legend has it that one day, King Wu Ding, seeking to govern his realm wisely, sought out talented individuals among his people and encountered Fu Shuo. Struck by his extraordinary presence, Wu Ding engaged him in conversation. Fu Shuo displayed a breadth of knowledge spanning from ancient to contemporary issues, sprinkled with humor, earning Wu Ding's deep respect. Overcoming societal prejudices, Wu Ding appointed Fu Shuo as his prime minister, entrusting him with national political duties. Fu Shuo entered the royal court and implemented a series of exemplary political measures, easing tensions between the royal family, the state, and slaves. His efforts led to political stability, peace among the people, and the completion of numerous unfinished projects, marking a period of prosperity and national peace. 8. The Human Heart, Complex and Profound, The Path of Enlightenment, Deeply Hidden In the quiet hours from midnight to dawn, when the world settles into silence and everyone drifts into sleep, comes the clearest moment of human consciousness. Similarly, in the early morning, as people awaken from a long rest while the natural world remains in a state of gentle awakening, we find ourselves at our most lucid. Utilizing these moments to purify the soul and reflect upon personal actions reveals that our senses, sight, hearing, taste, and touch are the very shackles binding our minds. 
Our desires and cravings act as machinery steering us toward downfall. After the establishment of the Qing dynasty, although many advised the Qing emperor, none urged him toward scholarly endeavors. The principles of ruling over the heavens and earth during those times were encapsulated within the Four Books, leading Shen Wenkui, a contemporary official, to suggest a unique approach. He advised that in the stillness of night and clarity of dawn, the emperor's mind would be most alert, recommending daily lectures on two chapters of the four books and one of the comprehensive mirror for aid in government. By closely studying the ways of governance, self-cultivation, managing family, ruling the state, and pacifying the world as taught by ancient sages and applying these lessons daily through personal experience and diligent practice, significant benefits could be realized. Impressed by Shen Wenkui's proposal, the Qing emperor praised him wholeheartedly and decided to follow his advice, which proved to be remarkably effective. In his spare time, the emperor committed to learning the four books and the comprehensive mirror, finding peace and clarity in his thoughts and actions, achieving a state of joyful enlightenment. 9. Avoid evil, pursue good. Frequent self-reflection enables one to transform any situation into an opportunity for clarity and awakening. Conversely, those who blame fate or others often harm themselves with their own negative thoughts, akin to wounding oneself with a spear. The paths are distinct. One leads through acts of goodness. The other originates from actions of malice. During the Warring States period, King Hui of Lu and his entourage, including the sage Qin Tai Ba, went hunting on a mountain. On this hunt, King Hui captured a charming young deer and instructed Qin Tai Ba to bring it back to the palace ahead of the group. On the way back, Qin Tai Ba noticed a large deer following them, crying out in distress. Realizing it was the mother of the captured fawn and moved by compassion, he released the young deer. Upon learning of this, King Hui was furious and expelled Qin Tai Ba from the palace. A year later, when it was time for King Hui's son to begin his education, the king sought a virtuous teacher. Remembering Qin Tai Ba, whose heart had shown through his compassionate act, King Hui sent for him, inviting him back to the palace to tutor the crown prince. Confused by the king's decision, his ministers asked, Why would you invite Qin Tai Ba back as the prince's tutor after he freed the deer you cherished? King Hui replied with a smile, Qin Tai Ba is not only learned, but possesses a compassionate heart. He showed mercy to a deer, risking punishment rather than breaking the bond between mother and child. Thus, having him as my son's teacher puts my mind at ease. This story illustrates the enduring value of kindness and compassion over transient desires, teaching that the cultivation of virtue is the foundation for wise and just leadership. 10. Clouds clear, the moon shines bright, dust off, the mirror shines light. When the water is undisturbed, it naturally becomes calm. When the mirror is free of dust, it naturally shines clear. Thus, people do not need to exhaust their energies in pursuit of tranquility within their souls. By simply removing negative and dark thoughts, natural clarity and peace will follow. There's no need to desperately seek happiness, for by distancing oneself from sorrow and worries, joy naturally arises. The story of Fan Zhongyan, a politician and scholar of the Northern Song Dynasty, exemplifies this philosophy. Coming from a poor family background, he could not afford formal education, and instead sought learning from a monk, subsisting daily on thick porridge and wild greens from the roadside. Sympathizing with his plight, the parents of his fellow students offered him meat and wine. However, when these friends visited him days later, they found the food untouched and spoiled. When asked why, Fan Zhongyan replied, I am not ungrateful for your kindness, 
but I am accustomed to simple meals and do not suffer from it. Indulging in these luxuries now would make it impossible for me to endure hardship in the future. Fan Zhongyan embraced hardship and found contentment in simplicity, which later paved the way for his illustrious career. This narrative reminds us that happiness and peace are not found through relentless pursuit, but by embracing simplicity and removing the complexities that disturb our inner peace. 11. The Futility of Resorting to Low Tactics Without moral cultivation, integrity and righteousness are enough to surpass high positions and wealth, more captivating than the famed song Snow White. However, if moral standards don't underpin the content, it ultimately becomes a superficial display of personal feelings or a low-tactic boasting technical skills. During the Eastern Han Dynasty, there was a man named Fan Zhong, known for his frugality, philanthropy, and generosity. Fan Zhang managed his household with strict rules, where generations lived together harmoniously, everyone diligently worked, and the family wealth grew annually, earning a reputation for prosperity. Furthermore, Fan Zhang was known to financially support the poor generously and was nominated as a Three Elders. A local family, the Haas, had two brothers fighting over inheritance, suing each other in court. Embarrassed by their behavior, Fan Zhang divided two of his land parcels among them to settle the dispute. Typically, he lent money amounting to hundreds of thousands, and upon his deathbed, instructed his son to burn all debt records. Debtors, feeling ashamed, voluntarily came to repay their debts. However, following his father's will, Fan Zhang's son adamantly refused to accept repayment. This story illustrates that true wealth and legacy lie not in material possessions, but in the cultivation of virtue and the positive impact one has on their community. 12. Striving for uniqueness, not eccentricity, seeking nobility, not extremism. Those who transcend the ordinary are considered exceptional. However, striving solely to stand out turns one into an oddity, not an exceptional being. It is noble not to engage in misconduct, but boasting of one's detachment from worldly affairs as a mark of superiority is not nobility. It's extremism. During the spring and autumn period, the renowned general of the state of Jin, Qi Huang Dang, upon aging, requested to retire. Jin De Gong, the ruler, asked him to recommend a successor. Without hesitation, Kai recommended Ge Ho, a known adversary. The ruler questioned, isn't Ge Ho your enemy? Why recommend him? Kai responded, your majesty asked for someone capable of carrying this significant responsibility, not about personal enemies. After Ge Ho's death, the ruler once again sought Kai's recommendation. This time, Kai suggested his own son, Ki Ingo. The ruler remarked, Isn't Kai Ingo your son? Why propose him? Kai replied, Your majesty requested a recommendation for a virtuous talent suited for this great duty, not a prohibition against nominating my own son. Kai's unbiased approach neither shielding foes nor favoring kin, selecting the virtuous for the nation's benefit, earned him enduring acclaim. Qi Huang Dong's legacy teaches the importance of prioritizing collective well-being over personal biases, truly embodying the spirit of genuine recommendation. 13. Embodying Virtue, Valuing Integrity Over Fame those who boast about their integrity are often criticized for it. Similarly, individuals flaunting their morals and education tend to be targets of censure. Thus, a true gentleman, possessing virtue without engaging in wrongdoing, should not vie for fame or recognition. Embracing simplicity and maintaining harmony are the most valuable traits in social interactions. 
Liu Dingxu of the Song Dynasty, initially a farmer, was engaged to a girl next door. After years apart pursuing his studies, he returned, intending to fulfill their marriage promise. However, the girl had since become impoverished and blind. Her family wished to dissolve the engagement, but Liu Dingxu believed it wrong to abandon her due to illness. They married, leading to a harmonious life together. Later, when Liu Dingxu committed a minor infraction, his superior spared him punishment, admiring his commendable character. 14. Embracing the good and the bad. In dealing with others, one shouldn't aim for perfection. It's important to accept the terrible, oppressive, and humiliating aspects of life, even those that are detestable. Living among others requires a level of tolerance and understanding for all types of people, whether they are virtuous or wicked, intelligent or foolish. The profound and enduring friendship between Guangzhong and Bao Shuya has become an inspiring tale passed down through generations in Chinese history. However, as Guangzhong neared death and Du Quan of Qi asked who could succeed him as prime minister, Guangzhong did not recommend Bao Shuya. He explained, Bao Shuya is kind and morally upright, but he is not suitable for managing the nation's affairs as prime minister. His hatred for evil is so intense it could be detrimental. A person too critical has no friends, just as water too clear has no fish. Therefore, he's not fit for the role of prime minister. When some schemers relayed this story to Bao Shuya, intending to drive a wedge between the two, Bao Shuya surprisingly agreed, saying, Guan Zhang spoke the truth. He prioritized public duties over personal relationships without regard for personal gain. This is why I recommended him. If I were prime minister, my first act would be to rid us of all you scoundrels. Those schemers, embarrassed by Bao Shuya's response, left in disgrace. This story underscores the importance of understanding and tolerating both the good and the bad in people and situations. It also highlights the value of placing collective needs above personal interests and the wisdom in recognizing one's own limitations and the strengths of others. 15. The Virtue of Moderation and Patience In the challenging terrains of high mountains where trees cannot grow, lush vegetation thrives in the winding valleys below. In rapid streams where fish cannot dwell, calm waters are abundant with life. Exhibiting excessively lofty behavior or adopting an excessively impulsive and extreme mentality are traits that individuals of integrity and virtue should strive to avoid. Liu Xuan, a renowned official during the Eastern Han Dynasty, was known for his extreme humility and gentle demeanor, treating others with great tolerance and understanding. Despite his wife's deep awareness of his talents and virtues, she sought to provoke his anger to test the extent of his forbearance. One day, as Liu Xuan hurriedly prepared for an audience with the emperor, dressing in his freshly laundered court attire, his wife suggested he have a bowl of soup before departing and instructed the servants accordingly. As a servant presented the soup to Liu Xuan, they accidentally spilled it all over his clothes. Yet, Liu Xuan's composure remained undisturbed. He calmly inquired, Did the hot soup burn your hand? His wife, witnessing his unwavering patience, deeply admired his capacity for tolerance. This story underscores the importance of moderation and patience in daily conduct, illustrating that true nobility lies not in one's outward achievements, but in the grace and forbearance with which one handles the trials of life. 16. Unfazed by adversity, unintimidated by power. A person of noble character possessing both ability and virtue remains unworried in adversity and vigilant in moments of joy. They are unafraid of those in power 
or those who act arrogantly but show empathy towards the elderly who may no longer have their strength. During the spring and autumn period, the state of Zheng was weak. At that time, there was a crown prince named Ji Hu from the state of Zheng, the eldest son of Duke Zheng. When Duke Zheng and Duke Hui of Qi met at the stone gate, Duke Hui saw Ji Hu and proposed a marriage between Ji Hu and his daughter. However, Ji Hu declined, saying, Qi is a great state and Zheng is small. I dare not aim too high. Duke Zheng told him, If you marry into Qi, we can rely on them in the future. Ji Hu replied, How can a man of honor rely on marriage for support and influence in times of ease and difficulty alike? Duke Zheng praised his son's aspirations and pressed no further. Later, when the northern barbarians invaded Qi, Duke Zheng sent Ji Hu with troops to aid Qi. Ji Hu skillfully strategized and valiantly fought, repelling the invaders. Duke Hui of Qi, overjoyed, offered the marriage proposal to Ji Hu again during a celebratory feast, which Ji Hu again declined. Ji Hu's generals advised accepting the marriage to secure and stabilize his position as the crown prince, but Ji Hu remained firm in his stance, refusing to compromise his principles. 17. Overflow from excess, break from rigidity. When a person's power peaks, it's like water in a container about to overflow. At this point, one must avoid adding even a drop more. Similarly, in a critical situation, like a tree about to be severed yet still holding on, one must refrain from exerting any additional force. During the Warring States period, the great general of the state of Chu, Zhao She, led his troops against the state of Wei, killing Wei's general, devastating their army, and capturing eight fortresses. He then planned to attack the state of Qi. Tran Chan, serving as an envoy for the king of Qi, congratulated Zhao Xi on his victories and inquired, what titles and rewards can one expect for such feats? Zhao Xi responded, a government official is the pillar, and titles are the grips of the state. Tran Chan further asked, Is there any position more honorable? Zhao Xi replied, Only the prime minister. Tran Chan remarked, Indeed, the prime minister is a prestigious position, but the king of Chu cannot appoint two prime ministers. By assisting the king of Chu in defeating Wei, capturing eight cities, and now intending to attack Qi, causing fear among its people, you have already sufficiently established your fame. However, your official rank cannot increase further. Therefore, if you attack Qi and fail, it would mean not knowing when to stop, leading to personal disaster, for it has always been said, overflow from excess, break from rigidity. Zhao Xi, recognizing the wisdom in these words, withdrew his troops and returned home. 18. Be lenient with others, strict with yourself. In dealing with others, it's essential to practice leniency, forgiving their mistakes and seeing them as minor, which allows for a more peaceful life. However, one should be strict with oneself, even in the absence of fault, seeking out personal shortcomings and ethical flaws can lead to continuous moral improvement. During the spring and autumn period, Duke Mu of Qin was inspecting his realm when his carriage broke down, and a horse suddenly ran away. He chased it to the south of Mount Qi, where he found a group of people slaughtering his horse for food. Duke Mu kindly expressed his concern. Eating this fine horse's meat without drinking wine worries me, as it could harm your health. He advised each person to drink wine before leaving. A year later, Duke Mu and Duke Hui of Jin clashed in the Han territory. Jin's forces surrounded Duke Mu's carriage, and Jin's official, Liang Do Mi, hurriedly pulled Duke Mu's horse. Seeing Duke Mu about to be captured in this dire moment, more than 300 people who had once eaten Duke Mu's horse raised their spears beside his carriage, bravely fighting to the death against Jin's forces. 
they ultimately defeated Jin's army and captured Duke Hui. This story highlights the virtues of leniency towards others and self-discipline. It demonstrates how forgiving and understanding others can lead to unexpected loyalty and support, while being critical of oneself encourages personal growth and integrity. 19. Viewing loss as gain, controlling desires. Looking at youthful behaviors through the perspective of the elderly can help eliminate the pursuit of fame and fortune. Recognizing that even in times of decline, prosperity can seem enticing but ultimately fleeting. During the Warring States period, the state of Zhou was besieged by Qin. Prince Xin of Wei sought to steal a military talisman from King Wei, resulting in the killing of a Wei general, and then led troops to break Qin's siege, saving Zhao. King Zhao planned to personally welcome him outside the city. Xin's strategist, Duang Xu, advised him, saying, I've heard, if others dislike you, you should know it. If you dislike others, let it not be known. If others have shown you kindness, never forget it. But if you've been kind to others, be willing to forget it. Xin asked, What do you mean by this? Duang Xu replied, The ancients believed in viewing loss as gain. Though you've saved Zhao by defeating Qin, it involved betraying Wei, stealing the talisman, and killing the Wei general. Now, as King Zhao comes to personally welcome you, we should go to meet him, hoping you can forget the deed of saving Zhao. Xin responded, I will follow your advice. This story illustrates the wisdom of restraint and humility, encouraging a shift in perspective where one's actions, especially those of generosity or heroism, are done without expectation of recognition or repayment, embodying the true essence of selflessness and virtue. 20. Embracing Optimism in a World of Change In a world where indifference can suddenly turn into warmth, leading to change, there's no need to cling too tightly to beliefs. Emperor Yao once remarked, what I said yesterday has turned into them, and I do not know who I will become tomorrow. This mindset can help people let go of the worries and entanglements that weigh down their hearts. During the Southern Dynasties, Taqi Khan, who served as a high official in the state of Qi, was known for his exceptionally broad-minded and easygoing nature. Once, while on his way to a garden party, he spotted a tavern by the road and decided to hop off his carriage to drink with his coachman and even the horse. As bystanders gathered, intrigued by the sight of a high official sharing drinks with a coachman, Tachi Khan paid no mind and continued to enjoy his drink. On another occasion at work, he wore a pair of short trousers, went shirtless and drank with his students. After getting drunk, he even farted on a nearby soldier, unconcerned about the potential for dismissal if word reached the court. He continued to host guests and indulge in food and drink, engaging in lively discussions. When advised to drink less, he laughed and said, Life is but a dream. Only wine remains true to a gentleman. How could one possibly drink less? This story illustrates the importance of maintaining optimism and a carefree spirit in the face of life's constant changes and societal expectations. It reminds us that embracing the transient nature of existence and finding joy in simple pleasures can lead to a more fulfilling life. 21. Transcending worldly attachments to revel in the way of heaven. Only when fish are in water can they swim freely, yet they forget the support the water provides and arrogantly take it for granted. Birds glide on the wind but fail to recognize it's the wind that carries them. Understanding this principle allows one to overcome the constraints of the external material world and indulge in spontaneous joys. Buddhism shares a parable, a great general who battled tirelessly, facing peril yet never succumbing to fear. Upon returning home while admiring a priceless vase, 
He accidentally dropped it. In a panic to catch it, he broke into a sweat. This incident made him realize the most precious thing in life is life itself, which he had never feared losing, yet the potential loss of a mere vase terrified him. He smashed the vase, renounced all worldly attachments, and became a monk. This story illustrates Buddhist philosophy. Achieving a state of detachment is the key to freeing oneself from the torment of desire, gradually eliminating lust, and finding peace within. 22. The Thin Line Between truth and falsehood lies in a single thought. Everyone possesses a heart filled with great compassion, and there's essentially no difference between a hermit and an executioner. True feelings exist everywhere and any time, indifferent to whether one dwells in a mansion of gold or a humble straw hut. The real distinction lies in how desires and personal sentiments often cloud our hearts, obscuring our innate compassion and genuine feelings. What seems like a minor gap is, in reality, a vast distance. Wang Shiji, a spirited individual from the Sui and Tang dynasties, disdained formalities and once served as a county official in Luhe. His fondness for wine over duties led to his dismissal. Reflecting on his situation, he remarked, The world is full of traps and snares. Better to return home and find peace of mind. He then retreated to his hometown, Haju. With 16 plots of land and a few hired hands, he and his family cultivated rice, brewed wine, raised livestock, and harvested herbs, living a self-sufficient life. At that time, there was a hermit named Wu Guang, a bachelor who had built a small house north of Haju and lived there for over 30 years. He was entirely self-reliant, not depending on family support. Wang Shiji admired Wu Guang's authenticity and decided to move in with him. Wu Guang, being mute, couldn't engage in conversations. Yet when they drank together, their silent exchanges filled with mutual understanding brought them joy. Wang Shiji would tell people, I can sense all of Wu Guang's thoughts, so does it matter whether he can speak? People are often blinded by desires and personal sentiments, which is why they fail to perceive Wu Guang's genuine heart. This story illustrates how true understanding and connection can transcend the need for words, highlighting the importance of looking beyond superficial differences and recognizing the universal capacity for compassion and sincerity within us all. 23. The virtue of magnanimity and the wealth of knowledge increase merit daily. The moral fiber of a person enhances with the cultivation of talent and virtue, which in turn is enriched by nurturing knowledge. Consequently, to perfect one's moral character, one must strive to broaden their generosity and understanding. To expand this generosity fostering one's knowledge is essential. Fung Dao Khan, a distinguished general of the Southern Liang dynasty exemplified humility, venerable talent, and superior knowledge, earning widespread admiration for his virtuous conduct. After each military campaign, while other commanders eagerly claimed credit in the presence of Emperor Xiao Yan of the Liang dynasty, Peng Dao Khan remained silent brushing off any derogatory remarks about his silence with a mere smile. On one occasion, Emperor Xiao Yan pointed out to the high official Shen Yue that Feng Dao Khan had never boasted about his achievements, not because they were lesser than others, but because his knowledge, wisdom, and magnanimity surpassed them. Shen Yue acknowledged, He indeed is your majesty's grand marshal. This narrative illustrates how expansive knowledge and a generous spirit contribute to a person's virtuous reputation and highlight the profound impact of maintaining dignity and humility, regardless of one's achievements or status. 24. The Three Watch Your Words Principles Q. 
Qiu Yuan emphasized the crucial practice of being mindful about one's speech, highlighting three key areas to always keep in mind. Reflect before speaking. It's crucial to ponder the potential impact of your words before expressing them. Careful and considerate communication can prevent misunderstandings and nurture relationships. Choose kindness. Words wield the power to uplift or to harm. Opting to speak with kindness and empathy can create a nurturing environment and encourage positive interactions. Value honesty. Being truthful establishes trust and integrity. Honest communication ensures that your words are respected and taken seriously. Adhering to these guidelines can help navigate the complexities of human interaction more smoothly, ensuring that your speech leads to positive results and strengthens connections with others. 25. Forming friendships with loyalty and living with sincerity. When making friends, it's essential to carry a spirit of valor and loyalty. In dealing with others, retaining genuine feelings is crucial. There was once a man named Duong Tuk who was very close friends with Din Tan Kong. Later, when Din Tan Kong became a national general, Duong Tuk decided to move away. Their peers found this quite strange. Could it be that they were drifting apart? Duong Tuk explained, I want to preserve the many years of our friendship. Now that Tan Kong has become a national general, our meetings would necessitate formalities not conducive to our usual rapport. If I don't see him, there might be a strain in our relationship due to perceived distance. Conversely, if I continue to visit him as before, those unaware of our bond might accuse me of ingratiating myself for favor. Living further away, when I wish to see him, I'll visit. This way, we avoid misunderstandings, I can maintain my integrity, and our friendship can endure. Duong Tuk thoughtfully navigated their friendship while also safeguarding against societal gossip, truly embodying the qualities of a loyal friend. 26. Virtue accumulates fortune, inner peace, compensates for hardship. When fate renders our fortunes shallow, we must enhance our virtues to face it. When fate wearies our bones with toil, we must relax our mind and body to compensate for it. When fate plunges us into dire straits, we must strengthen our moral cultivation to clear the path. What more can the heavens do to us then? Kuang Heng from the Western Han Dynasty came from a family of farmers, yet he aspired to study. Lacking financial support, he worked odd jobs during the day to get by and dedicated his nights to learning. Once, while working for a wealthy household, he encountered a vast collection of books. Kuang Heng offered to forego his wages in exchange for borrowing a few books to read. However, lacking money for a lamp and oil, and with the neighbor's light obstructed by a wall, he could not illuminate his room. Ingeniously, he drilled a hole in the wall to let the light from the neighbor's lamp shine through, positioning his books beneath this beam of light to read. By borrowing the neighbor's light, Kuang Hong tirelessly pursued his studies, becoming proficient in the classics and earning widespread respect. Emperor Yuan of Han, an enthusiast of the classics, invited Kuang Hong to the palace to assist in his studies. Trusted and valued, Kuang Hong was appointed as a prime minister and later ennobled as Marquis of Luan. From humble beginnings, through relentless effort and learning, Kuang Heng eventually transcended his impoverished circumstances. 27. The Wisdom of Retreat – Finding Peace Beyond the Battle In 506 BCE, during the aggressive expansion of the state of Wu, King Fu Shai deployed the era's esteemed military strategist Sun Tzu as the leading general with 30,000 elite troops to attack the state of Chu. The Chu forces suffered a significant defeat, and W. Bai Yu's army, capitalizing on their victory, employed the surprise attack strategy, marching 700 miles in 11 days, winning five battles, 
and capturing the Chu capital, Ying. King Zhao of Chu fled south. Sun Tzu's subsequent support of King Fuchai in defeating the state of Qi at the Battle of Ailing secured Wu's esteemed reputation, leading to its dominance over the state of Jin at the alliance in Huangqi two years later, elevating Wu to the status of a hegemon. After aiding King Fuchai in establishing a legacy, Sun Tzu understood the proverb, When the birds are gone, the good bow is stored away. When the cunning rabbit is dead, the hunting dog is cooked. Recognizing the transient nature of power and influence, Sun Tzu chose to step back at the height of his authority. He retreated into seclusion in the mountains, dedicating his later years to writing and enjoying a peaceful retirement. This narrative teaches the profound lesson that true fulfillment often lies beyond the clamor of worldly achievements. By willingly stepping down from the pinnacle of success, one can achieve a perfect ending to their journey. Living quietly at home in a serene environment free from competition is where genuine self-cultivation and character nourishment flourish. 28. Speaking without action is merely empty talk. People who often speak of the joy of living in the mountains may not fully grasp the true delight of such a life, and those who claim to despise fame and fortune may not have truly relinquished their desire for it. Dongfang Shuo, a witty scholar of the Western Han dynasty, had a penchant for drinking. Unlike most hermits of his time who secluded themselves in the deep mountains, Dongfang Shuo chose to serve in the imperial court. He frequently remarked, those who talk about the joy of seclusion in the mountains may not genuinely understand its pleasure. Those who claim to be indifferent to fame and fortune may not have truly let go of it. Thus, he declared himself a hermit hidden in plain sight within the court. Legend had it that Mount Quan held exquisite wine that could grant immortality. Upon hearing this, Emperor Wu fasted for seven days and sent Lo Ban with a group of young boys and girls to the mountain to fetch this divine liquor, which they successfully obtained. However, Dongfang Shuo stealthily drank it all. Furious, Emperor Wu ordered his execution. Dongfang Shuo argued, If the wine truly possesses such power, then you would be killing a deity, and I would not die. If it doesn't, then what's the use of the wine? After pondering this, Emperor Wu grasped the wisdom in his words, laughed, and released him. This story underscores the importance of aligning words with actions and reveals the folly of empty declarations. Dongfang Shuo's clever retort not only saved his life but also highlighted the profound truth that mere talk without understanding or genuine commitment is meaningless. 29. The world is as broad or as narrow as we make it. Time feels endless, yet for those who are busy, it seems fleeting. The earth is infinitely spacious, yet those with narrow minds see it as confined. The beauty of wind, flowers, snow, and moonlight is meant to add joy and relaxation, yet the petty-minded deem it superfluous. Long ago, an elderly man had two sons. One day he called them and said, I'm getting old and it's time for you to take care of the family. Today I'm giving each of you ten tails of silver to do a good deed, then return home. Whoever shows greater virtue will inherit the family estate. Months later, the sons returned. The eldest said, I went to the riverbank and saw a woman attempting to drown herself. I jumped in and saved her. She was pregnant, so I actually saved two lives. The younger son recounted, I saw our neighbor, a skilled martial artist who often bullies us, drunk and lying near a cliff's edge, one turn away from falling to his death. I thought of pushing him off, but then realized our country needs his prowess and the battlefield needs his courage. So I woke him up instead. Ashamed, he thanked me and left. The father, upon hearing this, laughed heartily and chose the younger son as his successor. 
The eldest son protested, but the father explained, Your brother has a generous heart, capable of putting aside personal grudges for the greater good of the country and our home. That is true virtue. 30. The Diminishing Joy of Excess When friends and acquaintances gather, singing, dancing, and reveling in joyous banquets, the party eventually ends, leaving only the dim light of dying candles and cold tea behind. All the joy dissipates, leaving a sense of lost interest upon reflection. With everything in the world changing so rapidly, why don't timely people turn back before it's too late? Once there were two brothers who lived in harmony, Lam Te and Ngu Yen An, with contrasting personalities. Lam Te was calm and modest, preferring a quiet demeanor, whereas Ngu Yen An was talkative, lively, and extroverted. One day, Ngu Yen An visited Lam Te, boasting, I've just been awarded by the local magistrate and am about to be promoted. Rather than celebrating, Lam Te responded with a cautionary tale. In the world, there's a type of carp with a red tail that loves to flaunt its vibrant fins, swimming southward. The lucky ones reach a broad river, but the unlucky end up in someone's salted fish jar. Isn't that a path to doom? People, when prospering, must remain clear-headed and not let success cloud their judgment, leading to ultimate misery. Isn't losing interest the ultimate outcome? Lam Tay's words deeply embarrassed Nguyen An Ya Fam. 32. The Illusion of Everything A Must Understand for the Successful Mountains and rivers in the vast expanse of the universe are but a speck of dust. Humans, even more so, are merely dust within that speck. Our lives, when compared to the infinite expanse of time, are as fleeting as a water bubble or a shadow. Similarly, worldly fame and fortune are just as ephemeral. It is said that without supreme wisdom, one cannot grasp the essence of truth. During the Eastern Han Dynasty, when Emperor Han visited the southern regions, his presence was marked by a grand entourage, signaling his authority and might wherever he went. Hearing of the emperor's personal inspection, crowds flocked to catch a glimpse. Yet, there was an old man who remained indifferent, continuing his work by the Han River as if oblivious to the emperor's presence. This peculiar behavior caught the attention of the chancellor, Zhang On, who instructed a servant to inquire why the old man did not join the throng. The old man merely smiled without responding. Intrigued, Zhang An approached him directly to ask. The old man replied, Was the emperor established because of the world's chaos, or was it in a time of peace? In the past, wise and saintly rulers led the people, living simply in thatched houses and unadorned wooden structures. Yet the world was at peace. Now rulers indulge in pleasures, wandering aimlessly while the people suffer. I am ashamed on your behalf. Zhang An was left deeply embarrassed by these words. 33. The Futility of Chasing Fame and Fortune in Life's Brief Span Life is as fleeting as the flame of an oil lamp. How many days can we really claim in our pursuit? Why squabble over minor gains within the confining space of a seashell, thinking it might somehow grant us the vast world beyond? A temple caretaker once had a wooden pillow made of cypress, over thirty years old, with a small crack on its underside. A local grain merchant named Thang Lam, seeking blessings at the temple, was advised by the caretaker, If you're unmarried, you might consider sleeping on this pillow. That night, Thang Lam dreamt. He entered the crack in the pillow and found a majestic world far surpassing our own, with red-painted gates, splendid palaces, and luxurious estates. Here, he met Chancellor Zhao, who arranged his marriage, resulting in six children, four boys, and two girls. Initially appointed as a confidential secretary, he soon rose to be a minister. Inside the pillow, 
Thang Lam forgot his real home, living contentedly until dissatisfactions arose. Called back by the temple caretaker, he saw the same cypress pillow as before. The caretaker explained, Within the pillow Thang Lam had experienced many years, yet in reality it was merely a brief moment. Human life, too, is like a dream. What value, then, does the struggle for superiority, the pursuit of fame and fortune, truly hold? 34. The Relativity of Space and Time a matter of perspective. The concepts of length and width, of vastness and narrowness, are all relative to one's subjective perception and psychological experience. Thus, for a person with a tranquil soul, a day can feel longer than an eternity, and for someone with a generous heart, even a cramped space can seem immensely spacious. Cao Khan, a distinguished general during the early Western Han Dynasty, was known for his fondness for alcohol, indulging day and night, often to the point of inebriation. His subordinates, from high-ranking officials to ordinary visitors, were concerned about his constant drinking and neglect of state affairs, wishing to advise him against it. However, upon their visits, Cao Khan would invariably invite them to join him in drinking until they were thoroughly intoxicated, leaving no room for serious conversation. His perpetual drunken state, seemingly oblivious to governmental responsibilities, displeased Emperor Wen. One day, Emperor Wen instructed Chao Khan's son to inquire about his father's approach to handling significant state matters. Surprisingly, upon hearing this, Cao Khan became furious, punished his son, and then instructed him to relay a message to Emperor Wen. Emperor Gao Zhu and Empress Lu have already conquered and stabilized the realm, establishing clear laws. All we need to do is follow these laws. By governing without unnecessary intervention, peace will naturally prevail across the land. This anecdote underscores the importance of perspective and mindset in shaping our experience of the world around us. It illustrates how a calm and content heart can influence one's perception of time and space, and how adherence to established principles can lead to harmonious governance. 35. Maintaining integrity and contentment as a means to avoid misfortune. Relying on power and influence often leads to the quickest and most tragic downfalls, whereas Preserving a calm and modest lifestyle, though it may involve simple pleasures, proves to be the most enduring. During the spring and autumn period, Teng Zhan wore tattered clothes while farming. The king of the state of Lu offered him a fortress, suggesting, Please use the income from this fortress to buy yourself some new clothes. Teng Zhan declined. Despite repeated offers from the king, he steadfastly refused to accept. The king's envoy asked, You're not asking others for it. It's being given to you. Why won't you accept it? Tung Zhan replied, I've heard that those who accept things from others end up fearing them, and those who give things to others tend to act superior. Even if you don't act superior towards me, how can I not fear you? Hearing this story, Confucius said, Tung Zhan's words are sufficient to preserve his integrity. This story highlights the virtue of upholding one's principles and finding satisfaction in a simple, honest life as a path to avoiding the pitfalls of ambition and external pressures. 36. Cultivating a resilient character, unshaken by adversity. To maintain composure during busy times, one must cultivate a sharp and alert mind in moments of leisure. Understanding the essence of human life deeply and thoroughly prepares one not to fear death. During the Qing dynasty, there was a scholar named Li Bao who was known for his stubbornness and served as a governor during the Yongzheng Emperor's reign. While inspecting Henan province, he sternly questioned the local magistrate, Dian Wenjing, on why he humiliated and offended the educated. Dian Wenjing, 
a cunning and deceitful official favored by Emperor Yong Zheng, was cornered by Li Bao's direct confrontation. Bearing a grudge, Dian Wenjing reported Li Bao to the emperor, seizing the opportunity to rally both internal and external officials against Li Bao, aiming to eliminate him. Emperor Yong Zheng, valuing Li Bao's talent yet displeased with his stubbornness, wanted him to endure hardship to change his ways before employing him again. Thus, he intentionally sentenced Li Bao to death twice. Li Bao was bound and taken to the execution ground. Emperor Yong Zheng ordered the executioner to place a knife to Li Bao's neck and asked, Do you now recognize Dian Wenjing's goodness? Unchanged in demeanor, Li Bao calmly replied, Being foolish, even in death, I fail to see where Wenjing's goodness lies. Emperor Yong Zheng found himself at a loss on how to weaken Li Bao's integrity and resilience. Unwilling to behead a righteous official, he ultimately released him. This narrative illustrates the power of cultivating a resilient character, capable of facing life's challenges without wavering, and highlights the enduring value of standing firm in one's principles, even in the face of extreme adversity. 37. Living in seclusion, beyond honor and disgrace, steadfast in morality. For those who choose to live in seclusion among the forests and mountains, the honors and disgraces of human life become irrelevant. For those dedicated to upholding morality, the fickleness and cold realities of the world hold no sway. Tang Bohu one of the four great talents of Zhang Yan during the Ming Dynasty, was a man of remarkable talent. His poetry and prose were exquisite, and he was skilled in calligraphy and painting. His literary style made him unparalleled in Zhang Yan, celebrated as a singular talent of his time. In the eleventh year of the Hongzhi era, Tang Bohu excelled in the imperial examinations at the local level, earning him the title of Tang Jiyuan by the villagers. Despite his humble background, Tang Bohu's home was always filled with esteemed guests. However, after being falsely accused and imprisoned, facing numerous hardships, he witnessed the transient nature of human relationships and the indifference of society firsthand. With the help of a friend, he was liberated from jail. This experience led him to an epiphany, prompting him to distance himself from the petty disputes and the black and white morality of society and to seek refuge in Buddhism. In his later years, he rarely ventured outside, spending most of his time in a small loft. Only when someone brought wine as an offering would he indulge in painting, his true passion. Through Tang Bohu's story, we see the choice to live beyond societal judgments of honor and disgrace, adhering steadfastly to personal principles and morality, ultimately finding solace in a simpler, more spiritual life. 38. Eliminating Distress for Inner Peace There's no need to rid yourself of impatience. Instead, aim to eliminate the worry that impatience brings, maintaining a tranquil heart. Similarly, you don't have to find a special method to change dire situations. It's enough to remove the sorrow they cause, keeping your spirit content. Qian Qianyi, a scholar from the Qing dynasty, faced poverty in his youth. During cold winters, he would wake up early to study, washing his face at the well, which left his skin dry and cracked. He pursued his education under extremely harsh conditions. Living in the capital for years and then returning to teach his younger brothers in Nanlu, Qian chose to isolate himself in an attic to focus solely on studying, asking others to remove the ladder and use a rope to hoist up his meals. He only descended once at the end of the year, yet he did not feel misery or hardship. He said, a cold and empty attic might be lonely, but it's a fine place to reside. Extreme heat or cold may be challenging, but they are the best motivators. 
By not dwelling on poverty and casting aside all worldly concerns, he eventually became a learned and wise man. 39. Greed leads to poverty. Contentment brings happiness. The insatiably greedy, even when gifted with gold and silver, lament not receiving precious jewels. Those granted ducal titles still envy the marquisates, clearly showing that even in wealth and power, one can feel a profound sense of spiritual lack. Conversely, those who understand satisfaction find joy in simple pleasures. Wild greens can taste better than fish and meat, and cloth feels warmer than mink, living as ordinary people yet experiencing a freedom and fulfillment beyond that of kings and dukes. Historically, there was a man named Andongba who served as the deputy prefect of Zhangzhou. Known for his greed, he was never content, always desiring more. In Zhangzhou lived a wealthy oil merchant named Zhang, who was not only rich but also skilled in playing chess. And Dongba, wanting a bribe from Zhang, summoned him for a game of chess, but only allowed Zhang to stand during the game. For every move Zhang made, he had to step back and wait by the window until An Dongba was ready to continue, dragging out a few dozen moves over an entire day. Exhausted and hungry, Zhang could barely stand it. The next day, Zhang was summoned again to play chess with An Dongba. While feeling utterly distraught, someone whispered to him, The deputy prefect doesn't really care about chess. He's just looking for a way to get some money from you. Why not just bribe him? Following this advice, Zhang reluctantly gifted An Dongba three gold ingots. Sure enough, after receiving the gold, An Dongba no longer demanded Zhang to attend his chess games. This story illustrates the emptiness of greed and the profound satisfaction that comes from understanding and embracing enough. While the greedy remain perpetually dissatisfied, those content with their lot in life find joy and fulfillment in the simplest of things, living a life of genuine happiness and freedom. 40. The Illusion of Serenity Amidst attachment, living in the mountains can be an enchanting experience. However, if one harbors a deep-seated longing for life in the wilderness, even the tranquil mountains can morph into the hustle and bustle of city life. Appreciating art and literature is a noble pursuit, yet when tainted with desire and attachment, it reduces one to a mere merchant. Thus, a pure and untainted heart can find paradise even in the midst of desire, whereas a heart filled with longing and attachment will find misery even in joyous surroundings. Wang Ming Qing, a renowned historian from the Qing dynasty once stayed with a wealthy family. Each time he entered their home, he would gesture as though embracing the riches around him. This peculiar habit piqued the curiosity of others, to which he explained his desire to absorb the home's prosperity. After achieving success and becoming an official, he frequently embezzled public funds. When confronted about his greed despite his education and wealth, and whether he feared tarnishing his legacy, Wang Ming King confidently replied, The scorn of avarice is but a momentary ridicule, while scholarship is an eternal endeavor. I am confident my writings will endure for centuries. Slander will cease, but my works will live on. My literary and moral contributions will last forever. Despite the bold and forthright statements in Wang Ming King's writings, they were not reflective of his true beliefs or actions, serving instead to mask his miserly and greedy behavior. 41. Subtlety over boldness, elegance over vulgarity. In the world of the distinguished and noble, the appearance of a revered figure holding a wooden staff and living secluded in the mountains can add a touch of grace. Whereas, in the hustle and bustle of the fishermen and salt peddlers, the presence of a high-ranking official in official court attire can introduce an air of vulgarity. 
Thus, it is said that subtlety surpasses boldness and elegance outshines vulgarity. During the Tang Dynasty, a scholar named Dong Ying went to the capital to take the imperial examination. Upon arriving at the exam venue, he was surprised to see the examiner's arrogant demeanor scrutinizing every candidate. Dong Ying, curious, whispered to a fellow examinee nearby who explained, they're checking for smuggled notes. Dong Ying, infuriated, exclaimed, to treat scholars as common thieves is despicable, and stormed off, refusing to partake in what he saw as a demeaning process. Returning to his lodgings, Dong Ying spread out paper, ground his ink, and, with vigorous strokes, painted a branch of plum blossom standing resilient against the winter wind, accompanying it with a poem that spoke of the inherent dignity and integrity of scholars, refusing to be demeaned or swayed by the base practices of the world. His friends and fellow poets, seeing the expression of his convictions in his art, praised him for not succumbing to corruption and for upholding his principles. This work of Dong Ying's became widely celebrated, inspiring others to maintain their noble spirit amidst adversity, making the painting a symbol of integrity widely admired and revered. 42. In leisure, the body rests. In tranquility, the mind dwells. Living in a relaxed environment frees us from the influence of worldly honor or disgrace. Maintaining a peaceful mind ensures worldly gains or losses do not cloud our judgment. Wang Ba, a hermit from the Eastern Han Dynasty known for his noble character, and Ling Hu Ziba from the same district were close friends. Later, Ling Hu Ziba became the Prime Minister of the State of So, and his son was appointed as a marquis. Ling Hu Ziba sent his son in a carriage with attendants to deliver a letter to Wang Ba, exhibiting a demeanor of ease and formality. When Wang Ba's son saw Ling Hu Ziba's son, he felt too inferior to even look up. After the visit, Wang Ba remained in bed, troubled. His wife, curious, asked what was wrong. Wang Ba explained, Ling Hu Ziba and I were close, but his son arrived so grandly, well-dressed and well-mannered, whereas our son looked disheveled and embarrassed. It saddened me for our son. His wife replied, You've always valued integrity over wealth and status. Why forsake your principles now over embarrassment for our son? Realizing his folly, Wang Ba sat up, laughed, and agreed with his wife. This story illustrates the value of remaining true to one's principles and finding contentment in simplicity, rather than being swayed by external appearances and societal status. 43. Unfazed by glory and power. I don't chase after the fleeting glories and riches, so why should I worry about the temptations of fame and fortune? Without a desire for promotion or wealth, why concern myself with the potential hazards of political office? Nan Gao Khan, a revered official of the Tang Dynasty, was known for his integrity and sharp judgment. Despite being criticized by the deputy historian, he remained steadfast in his principles, refusing to yield, earning him praise in his era. During the Tianbao era of the Tang Dynasty, the regional commander, An Lushan, rebelled against the imperial court under the banner, Punish Yang Guozhong. Knowing Khan's talents, An Lushan appointed him as the governor, hoping to win him over. Khan outwardly appeared to comply, but secretly organized forces to counter the rebellion. After defeat, he was escorted to Luoyang, where an enraged An Lushan confronted him. I elevated you to governor. What grievance led you to betray me? Khan fiercely retorted, You treacherous cur. My family has served the Tang dynasty loyally for generations. How could I covet high office and riches, betraying my heart? I only regret not killing you to repay his majesty. And Lushan, seething with anger, 
ordered Khan to be tied to a pillar south of the city, where he was tortured, forced to endure the unimaginable. Despite relentless abuse, Khan continued to hurl insults until his final breath, a testament to his unwavering loyalty and integrity. 44. Ease of coming and going, unhurried and free. One should be like a small boat unmoored, letting itself drift or halt freely. The spirit should be like wood turned to charcoal, unafraid of being cut or scented, feeling no pain or irritation. During the reign of Emperor Zhao Zong of the Tang Dynasty, there was a scholar named Su Wei Dao. After passing the imperial examination with distinction, he was appointed as a local official. In 684, Empress Wu Zetian deposed Emperor Zhang Zong and began restructuring the central power apparatus. In this reshuffling, Su Wei Dao, previously a lowly county magistrate, was promoted to a high-ranking second-grade official, a meteoric rise that was the envy of his contemporaries. However, Su Wei Dao's fortune was short-lived. Soon after his appointment as the director of the Imperial Academy, he was accused and imprisoned. Thus, he lost his former prestige and suffered torture. One day, Empress Wu Zetian visited the prison, and feeling pity upon seeing Su Wei Dao's emaciated appearance as he crouched eating his meal, ordered his release. Su Wei Dao regained his freedom and his former position, a turn of events both astonishing and fortunate. Yet, the factional strife within the court meant his life was far from peaceful, and he was soon demoted and reassigned elsewhere. In this round of political infighting, Su Wei Dao experienced both highs and lows, becoming indifferent to worldly matters. The tumultuous life dulled the scholarly essence of Su Wei Dao, yet he couldn't sever ties with the allure of high office and wealth, unlike the hermits who lived in contented obscurity. 45. Desire breeds impatience, contentment brings peace. A person filled with desires will stir up turmoil even in the coldest depths of water or the quietest forests, unable to find peace. While one free from cravings remains cool, even in scorching heat and undisturbed amidst the busiest markets. During the Qing dynasty, there was a renowned scholar named Nguyen Nguyen who one day was wandering through Bingxiong Luo Mountains. The local official, driven by greed, was writing invitations according to a list when Nguyen Nguyen arrived. Dressed in simple cloth and straw shoes, the official mistook Nguyen for a common villager and dismissively told him to sit tea, paying him no further attention. After finishing his writing, the official inquired about Nguyen's surname, initially assuming him to be a distant relative and thus treated him with a bit of respect, offering tea. Once settled, upon learning Nguyen's full identity, the official hurriedly cleaned a chair for him to sit up higher and ordered better tea to be served, treating Nguyen with high guest honors. Shortly after, the official requested Nguyen to write something. Nguyen, hesitantly claiming his writing wasn't impressive, boldly inscribed, sit, invited to sit, invited to sit higher, tea, make tea, make good tea. Through this verse, Nguyen Nguyen pointedly ridiculed the official's profit-driven demeanor. 46. The Burdens of Wealth and Status Insights from Mencius Individuals with abundant wealth face greater losses when fortunes turn, leading to a life filled with more worries than those less affluent. Similarly, those in high positions experience more pain when they fall, making their existence less peaceful compared to the humble. Mencius, born as Dai, was a philosopher during the late spring and autumn period and the beginning of the Warring States period and the founder of the Mohist school. Coming from a modest background, he worked as a craftsman and described himself as a common man. Initially a student of Confucianism, 
he grew disillusioned with its petty rituals and established his own philosophical school. Mencius deeply empathized with the struggles of the working class, vehemently opposing the degradation of the poor by the wealthy and the arrogance of the elite towards the humble. He advocated for mutual love and beneficial exchanges. Those with strength should offer help, those with wealth should share, and those with morals should teach the morally lacking. He believed such practices could ensure the hungry are fed, the cold are clothed, the tired are rested, and the disorderly are corrected. From the principle of inclusive love, he opposed unnecessary wars that oppress the weak by the strong. Mencius also introduced concepts of frugality in consumption and burial, and condemned music as a luxury, critiquing the lavish and unrestrained lifestyles of the rulers. He and his disciples wore straw shoes, ate plain food, and drank simple tea, shunning luxurious living. His teachings of living simply and prioritizing righteousness and humaneness serve as a model for the wealthy and a comfort for the poor.